Good morning, students. Welcome to Narayana Online Classes. This is Yagnesh Sai Charan. Today, let us discuss the key of the assignment, Some Natural Phenomena of 17th June, 8th Class, CBSC. Why does the plastic comb rubbed with the dry hair attract the tiny pieces of paper? So, whenever we rub the plastic comb to the dry hair, the electrons of the hair will be transferred to the comb. So, the comb will be electrically charged. So, whenever this comb is kept near the basis of paper, on the basis of paper, the induced dipole formation takes place and all these pieces of paper will be attracted to the comb as seen. So, if it is rubbed on the dry hair, first of all, electrification of the comb takes place. So, after the electrification of the comb, so whenever we just bring it to the near to the pieces of paper, so we can see all the pieces of paper will be getting attracted because of that. So, every paper behaves like a dipole and it will be useful in transferring the charge from the paper to the comb till the complete charge on the comb, on the comb is completely discharged. So, let us see the second question. What is lightning? So, lightning is the occurrence of natural electric discharge of very sh uh, short duration and high voltage between a cloud and the ground or within a cloud accompanied by bright flash and typically also the thunder. So, lightning is a process of occurrence of a natural electric discharge that happens between cloud and cloud or sometimes it happens between the cloud and the earth. Momentarily it happens and it occurs for a very short duration by giving a very very bright flash and sound. Let us see the third question. Explain why a charged balloon is repelled by another charged balloon. So, here let us consider the two balloons. So, let us consider the two balloons are charged. So, same kind of charge is existing on these two balloons. So, because of the similar charges or like charges repel, the two balloons will move away from each other or they will ripple from each other. So, the principle involved in the repulsion of the two balloons is like charges ripple whereas unlike charges attract. So, as the same kind of charge is present on the two balloons, the two balloons will move away from each other. Let us see the fourth question. How will you charge an inflated rubber balloon by the method of friction? So, if we just consider an inflated rubber balloon, the balloon with some air, if you rub this balloon with a woolen cloth, this is woolen cloth and this is the inflated balloon. So, whenever we rub this woolen cloth to this inflated balloon, the electrons which are present on this woolen cloth will be getting transferred to this inflated balloon. So, the transfer of electrons takes place, transfer of electrons takes place from wool to the balloon. So, the balloon will gain the complete negative charge as the electrons are getting transferred from this woolen cloth to this inflated balloon. So, this is the way we can charge the inflated rubber balloon by the method of friction. By the method of friction, we are rubbing the inflated balloon with the help of a woolen cloth. The electrons present on the woolen cloth are getting transferred to the inflated balloon. So, the surface of the balloon completely becomes of negatively charged. So, the surface is completely negatively charged on this inflated balloon. Let us see the fifth question. Explain why a glass rod can be charged by rubbing when held by a hand, but an iron rod cannot be charged by rubbing if held by a hand. So, let us see. Let us see a glass rod is held by a hand. So, it is in our hand. Let us consider. So, if we rub this glass rod, with a silk cloth, let us consider this is the silk cloth. So, let us rub this glass rod with the silk cloth. So, what happens here? Because of this charging by rubbing, the electrons present on this glass rod, all the electrons present in this glass rod are getting transferred to this silk cloth. 
the transfer of electrons takes place from the glass rod to the silk rod and because of the deficiency created in this glass rod this complete glass rod attains a positive charge so as the charges created are in static in nature all the charges will, will reside on the same surface of the glass but whereas if we consider a iron rod which is held by hand so let us consider this is the iron rod and we are holding this iron rod in our hand so the moment we charge this iron rod with the help of any other material the charges which are created on this iron rod are getting transferred through our hand and our body so the charges won't reside for longer time or more time uh, just compared to that of a glass rod so this is the reason why a glass rod can be charged by rubbing when we hold with our hand but whereas an iron rod cannot be charged by rubbing because by the moment we charge the iron rod the complete charges on the iron rod will be transferred through our body as it is a conductor that is the reason why we can't charge a iron rod but we can charge a glass rod let us see the sixth question a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth what type of charge is acquired by silk cloth and a glass rod so let us consider a glass rod and let us take a silk cloth so this is the silk cloth and this is the glass rod if we just rub the silk cloth to the glass rod the electrons which are present on this glass rod are transferred to the silk cloth so as there are more number of electrons which are present on the silk cloth now silk cloth gains negative charge then the deficiency of electrons created on the glass rod makes it a positively charged so the charge present on glass rod is positive so through the process of uh, just rubbing or friction by charging by friction the silk cloth attains negative charge as it is taking the complete electrons from the glass rod and because of the deficiency the glass rod is becoming a positively charged let us see the seventh question what name is given to the flash of light which occurs in the sky during the rainy season so during the rainy season a flash of light that will be transferred from one cloud to another cloud and this flash of light that we see is named as lightning so lightning occurs as a natural electric discharge that transfers from one cloud to another cloud so this is the flash of light that we call as lightning let us see the last question the eighth one name the scientist who showed that lightning is electric in nature so benjamin franklin is a scientist who showed the lightning is electrical in nature so you can see in this picture the benjamin franklin flying his kite using a very very thin copper wire so he found that the high voltage discharge that is coming out from this lightning so it is completely electrical in nature so with the experiment of his kite and that copper wire so he proved that lightning is electrical in nature so benjamin franklin is the first scientist who showed that lightning is electrical in nature